Hi everybody, I thought I'd make this little video on the jazz ride cymbal, one of my all-time favourite things. <laughs> so um, I just thought I'd give you a few little uh, tips and uh, thoughts and uh, ideas that I have about playing the ride cymbal, some things that I were taught that, that really helped me and, um, and things that I've thought about a lot uh, through my own teaching. And uh, so I've got some very sort of little specific things that I think can make a big difference to uh, how much you swing when you play the ride cymbal. Because uh, as uh, Duke Ellington said, it don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. So uh, let's get into it. Okay, so the ride cymbal. Now this is um, this is uh, this is a very controversial subject for some people, and uh, <laughs> I can see why. So hopefully uh, I won't trigger too many um, too many hostilities <laughs> with what I'm going to say in this. Um, so I've I found there's a few things a few things that I were taught. There was there's a couple of things I was taught, and it really opened my eyes and my ears to what I was doing. And it was like you know you get these kind of eureka moments. Um, where actually no, it's not like that. It's more like when someone points out there's a crack in the ceiling in a in a in a room that you've walked in a hundred times and never noticed, and then they say, "Look at that crack up there," and you go, "Oh crikey, I never saw that." And then of course every time after you walk in that room, you you can't stop seeing it, right? And uh, music is like that. That's that's the one thing I have found over the years of my many many years of studying music. Um, you 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 can you can have an album or a record that you've listened to a thousand times, and then somebody points on that, you go, I never even noticed that, and then you, it's always there. You always hear it. So this was kind of like one of those moments for me, when my teacher Trevor Tompkins, great British jazz drummer Trevor Tompkins, great teacher, uh, showed me this. And then um, I've you know over the years, it's it's been many years, a couple of decades since then uh, that I've been teaching and. Um, those ideas and concepts have kind of filtered and solidified a little bit into my own teaching. So I've divide, I've, 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 I've used a lot of what Trevor taught me, but um, have also come up with some of my own kind of ways of maybe uh, talking about it, and 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 hopefully that will help. So here we go. So, so the first thing that a lot of people um, get wrong when they start playing jazz um, from books. Okay, so if you you might have you might have um, you might have played another style of music, and you got a book, and he says, "All oh, right, okay, this is a jazz beat." Okay, well, well, first of all, there's no such thing as a jazz beat. A jazz beat doesn't exist because jazz drummers don't play beats. Okay, what they play is they play time. And what I mean by that is when you think of a beat and, and most styles of music, what it is is it's it's a pattern that repeats and it loops and you learn that beat and you play it round and round. And jazz doesn't work like that. Okay, So when you're playing jazz, um, you, you essentially you never really play the same bar twice if you notated it and transcribed it exactly. And because what we do is we play time and we comp, okay? We, play, we, 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 we use comping. And so these are quite important concepts when you're thinking about studying jazz. But, I, but I'm not here to get into that. Um, I'm just giving you a little bit of uh, background. We're going to look at some technique of, of playing the ride cymbal. So, so in jazz, when you play uh, jazz drums, for me, the way I think about jazz and the way it's different is that essentially the groove is all on the cymbals. So the, the cymbals are much more dominant in, in jazz drumming. Um, and in other styles, it's more about the drums, okay? And I think of the cymbals as like embellishments or decoration, whereas, whereas in jazz, it's, it really is the groove, and particularly on that ride cymbal. That ride cymbal is the main thing Okay, that you're going to play, and again, you know, jet now even saying that word jazz, right? That's a big word. We're talking about like to over a hundred years of of music, okay, which has evolved, and there's many, many different types of jazz. So, like, I use that term loosely. So, I guess when we when what I would start people with is I I I'm, I would start with like what we what we refer to modern jazz, which is music from the kind of late 1950s. Okay, so let's 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 get into that. And so, if you're going to study that style, the person to study is Miles Davis. Okay, and his first great quintet, and the drummer in that band was the great um, Philly Joe Jones. Okay, so like that's a really good place to start if you want to get into this. Uh, or, or I guess you could call small group uh, playing jazz. You know, your quartets, quintets, and things like that. So when you you're in that situation, you're playing modern jazz, you're playing jazz standards. 
uh, you're in a quartet, quintet, um, what you're going to be doing a lot is playing this ride cymbal. This ride cymbal is going to be the main thing where the groove is. And that's going to be the thing that's going to make make the music swing or not. You know, and you often hear people say, oh, that guy really swings. OK, and there is something very specific that you can do to help that. OK, now, um, one of the problems I think a lot of this, ha- one of the reasons I think we get this, this, this isn't so uh, well kind of covered is because you can't write this down okay so what i'm talking about today are things that you can't put on the notation there was no notation for it so so that's like i think why some of this still remains a bit of a mystery where you get it from you get it from listening to the records okay so this is really important if you want to play jazz or any type of music you got to listen to them records. you got to have that sound. You've got to have that reference point in your head. If you don't know what I'm talking about, have you got no idea of what that s- sounds like? When I say Philly Joe Jones, Miles Davis, mo- uh, first great quintet, um, late 1950s, if you, if you don't have a sound in your head of what I'm talking about, then then you're never going to be able to play that on, on, on this cymbal, right? Because you've got no reference. You've got no, nothing to compare uh, what you're hearing with what you've got in your head. So the first step is always to get some records, get listening, a lot of listening, and make sure you've got that very clear sound in your head. Whenever I play music, okay, I'm always referencing something in my head. I've got a sound in my head of some music, of a sound that I'm trying to then get out the drums. And I think that's really crucial. So having said all that, <laughs> um, let's get into the actual techniques. So... So if you listen to the records, now there are some things, I think there's some common mistakes that people get from that, okay? So we all know this this jazz ride cymbal pattern, okay? I call it 10 to 10, right? 10 to 10, 10 to 10, right? 10 to 10, 10 to 10. And then we know the ride cymbal goes on the two and the four. So what we get is, if we, I, I count triplets as one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, okay? And, and, and swing, jazz swing is a triplet fill, okay? Well... Of course, again, that's quite controversial because as it gets faster, it becomes more straight quavers. But if we're talking about a medium uh, tempo, we're talking about triplets. So again, another confusion is when they write this down, they usually use dotted eighths and sixteenths, which is technically wrong. That's not how you play it. So again, there's more confusion there to watch out for. But when we play, we play triplet fill. So I count it one, two, let three, four, let one. So if you're counting all the triplets, one, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one. Okay, that's where all the placements are. Hi hat winner goes on two and four. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one. Okay, now most people will will be aware of this, but here's some things that um that you may not be aware of. These are the specific things that I'm talking about that are going to help you get get that to sound right. Okay, because there's one thing playing the rhythm but what you need to get is the right sound okay and i think this is where there's and an, an not a lot of um, stuff out there about this so if you listen to the records what you'll hear very often you'll hear that accent on two and four but i think a common mistake people make is they play the accent on the ride symbol and that's not what's happening okay so one of the things to avoid is this one two three Okay, I'm exaggerating, right? But I've heard people play like that. And now, because n- that's not going to swing. That doesn't swing, all right? So um, when you're hearing, what you're hearing on the records, that accent is actually the hi-hat. You're hearing that, okay? And what the, what the, the ride symbol is very even, all four even. Four beats in the bar, very even, okay? One, two, three, four. So uh, forget the lets, I'm just going to play the qu- crotches, the quarter notes. One, two, three, four. Four. And actually, just to control that ride cymbal and play four even beats, it's it's not as easy as it seems. A ride cymbal is very unforgiving. It's hard to be very very consistent because the slightest little change in in pressure in articulation will change the sound. There's a there's a hundred different notes on a ride cymbal, and you've got to get the same note every time. Okay, so trying to keep that very easy, even, nice and relaxed. Now, when I put the hi-hat in, one, two, three, four, what I'm not doing is accenting the ride cymbal. 
I'm trying to make all four even, okay? Now, the reason for that is, what you're trying to do is, the, in, in jazz, that ride cymbal, that goes with the bass, okay? The double bass. A boom, 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 dun. And what we call the walking bass, he plays an even uh, crotchets, and, and the bass players plan even, okay, even four in a bar, nice legato sound. They want, they want you want the note to last to the next note. A boom, 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 and they put a little skip down again, but um, it's all all even, and that's what you're trying to match on the cymbal. So the ride cymbal and the bass go together like this. The two and a four is is it gives you that accent on the turn four but that's not happening over here okay so that's the first thing that's really important and that will really help your 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 ride symbol to swing now there's something else that's even more important <laughs> okay and again this is not written down and again it's a common mistake a lot of people pay play, um uh, make when they start to play jazz i sometimes hear them play like this Okay, that doesn't swing. Okay, there's a problem there. And actually, if you listen to, I'm um, now I'm going to play it how it should be, right? And see if you can see the difference. Did you see what I'm doing? So, so the difference is on the first time round, how most people play it, they play all the notes equal. I'm talking, I'm talking dynamics now. Okay, so we dealt with the rhythm, the rhythmic placement, but there's, a, there's dynamics in here which are often missing, and this is what will make it swing or not. You can't play all their notes the same. So what I'm doing is, when I play, when I play the four downbeats in the bar, the four quarter notes, the crotchets, on one, two, three, four, they're all strong notes, but they're even. They're very even, and I'm trying to get a very, what we call, legato sound on that, okay? So... One, two, three, four. Now, when I put in those little skip beats, the lets, the upbeats, whatever you want to call them, those triplets, those are not the same volume. Those are very light, okay? So those up little skip, upbeat, triplet, lets, off beats, whatever you want to call those, little those, those two notes, there's one just before beat three and one just before beat one, okay? And I count them one, two, let, three, four, let, one. So when I play my lets... I'm playing them at a much uh, reduced dynamic to the to the other four notes which are all on the beat. So what I've got is essentially two dynamic levels within my ride cymbal. And that is what makes it swing because you're getting an even four and I'm putting those little let notes in and that's not disrupting the legato feel of the four. I'll show you what I mean again, okay? Okay, can you hear that? You hear the difference, right? There's two. Now, let's look at the technique because this is very significant. This is how I do it. This is how I control that. When I play the downbeats on the beats one, two, three, four, I'm playing a downstroke. I'm going forwards. I'm going into the cymbal. Okay, what we call a downstroke. If you've done, if you've done any uh, molar technique, I, I studied with Jim Chapin, so I studied molar technique. Um, then you'll know about this. But we can also talk about up and down strokes. Okay, so when I'm playing on the four beats and the main four beats in the bar, I'm playing downstrokes. I'm going into the cymbal. My, I'm, 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 I'm going to exaggerate. I'm going to use a bit of arm again to exaggerate. So here, one, two, three. Four, okay. Of course, I come up to, to before the downbeat, but they're all downbeats. But when I play the lets, the little skip beats, the triplets, the upbeats, those are upstrokes. Look, one, uh, sorry, one, two, let three, four, let one. So an upstroke is when I'm my arm is coming back, but what I do is I just catch it. I just catch it on the way up. All right. It's an upstroke. If you if you don't know about upstrokes, you need to. There's probably other stuff out there. Maybe I'll do another video on it. So this is how I control the dynamics on my cymbal uh, when I'm playing that pattern. Okay, and I'm using that. I'm using that technique very consistently. Every down beat, every every um, beat on the beat, every on beat. Yeah, with the numbers one, two, three, four. They're all downstrokes. Okay, downbeats are the downstrokes, and the upbeats are the upstrokes. Okay, now of course, when you get into more a little later and more modern jazz, of the, that 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 ride cymbal pattern evolved. We don't play a, uh, a continuous sort of rep rep 
re repeated pattern so much now, you can break that up. And those let those basic those upbeats, those little lets, the skip beats, they can come in more randomly. Um, in, in, and that's what tended to happen with the evolution of jazz. Um, early swing drummers tend to play that same pattern over and over very religiously. But as we get into more modern jazz, it started getting a little more broken up. But when I do that, I still use the same technique. It's always a downstroke for a downbeat and always an upstroke for an upbeat. And so they're always very light. So I always get that consistent dynamics on my ride cymbal. I'll show you what I mean again. And I, again, I won't use the hi-hat because you, so you can hear it. I'm just throwing them around randomly now. I'm kind of exaggerating a little bit just so just to demonstrate, yeah? But you hear the difference. Now when I put my hi-hat in, And then I start comping, okay, a little quicker. See how I'm trying to really get that bump? In my head, it's bass, I can hear the bass. And of course I do these little hits now and again as well. That's something else, part of the comping, the phrasing, okay, like a question and answer phrasing. I, I, I would play those little crashes as a response to something I'm hearing in a soloist. I might fill in the gaps. They'll play a little line, bah, and deal, you, and bah, and bah, boof, boof. you know, this is this is a kind of bebop modern modern jazz approach. So um, in my in my head, I'm hearing I'm hearing all that music, and so this is what I'm talking about. Like you you got to have those reference points. So even when I, there's no music, I still hear it. I still hear it, and I'm playing. I'm trying to play music on the drums, right? But I hope that sort of um, I hope that made sense because it is a bit bit of a bit of an interesting thing now so what you need to do basically is go back and I, I worked on that a lot okay don't get me wrong I spent a lot of time on that very very slowly to really program that in I had to I had to really over months okay so I had to I had to program that in until that became an automated uh, thing so now when I'm playing when I'm playing music I'm not thinking about that that technique it's like breathing right you don't you don't think oh I better breathe in and you go, oh, hang on a minute, um, I better breathe out again, right? You, <laughs> you don't, your brain is not doing that. You're, while, while you're doing stuff, you're breathing. So, so like that became programmed, that became automated. But I did it in a very conscious and deliberate way. So I, took, I spent a lot of time working on that up and down stroke until that became absolutely um, programmed in uh, and, and totally automated. Uh, and again, very slow got to do it really slow so that you can hear really hear hear that those notes okay anyway this ended up to be <laughs> longer than i hoped i'm sorry but i i you know there we go i hope you enjoyed it i hope you found something useful i hope maybe it was enlightening maybe there was some stuff there that you kind of had done but hadn't thought of it in that way before or maybe maybe you'd never even considered this so um yeah do do um do do subscribe to my channel and uh, I'll, I'll try and put some more of these videos out. Um, check out my website. Um, there's, there's a lot of resources on there for, for different um, instruments as well. I teach uh, jazz improvisation workshops to groups um, of different instruments, but my specialty is drum kit. So when I'm teaching any technique or anything like that, I'll always be on the drum kit. Um, but if you want to learn more about improvising in general, and uh, then, then there's plenty of stuff on my website. So hope to see you again. Thanks very much. Thanks for your time. Uh, leave a comment below if you think there's anything I missed, which I probably did. Um, or if you found it helpful, then do give it a little thumbs up because that really helps me. Take care, everyone. See you next time.